Faith will. 
we give the Lord a hand clap of praise today. He is so good. I believe each and every day he calls us to move out deeper into the waters of his grace and his power and his strength. And I think even today on this Father's Day, hey, dads, we're called to go deeper for our family, for our jobs, our friends, but most importantly, for the Heavenly Father who lives inside of us. So dads, let's go deeper, deeper in the Spirit of God. It's because he loved you first. Amen. Amazing love that welcomes me. The kindness of mercy that bought with blood wholehearted. Worship him. Sing that chorus again, church. Sing it unto the Lord today. Worship him in this place. God, come on. Your soul.
Father, you are good. You are great. And you are greatly to be praised. Father, we thank you so much again for this incredible opportunity it is to just stand before you in this place. And Lord, this life will and has and can bring suffering. But Lord, we choose to remember the price you paid on Calvary. It doesn't take care of all the daily issues, but Lord, when an eternity is at stake, there's nothing more important than the knowledge of the foundation of a relationship bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. So Lord, we thank you for this day, for this opportunity. Thank you for your Holy Spirit in this place. We pray as our pastor comes now, God, you would fill him with your word. Fill him with your spirit. God, let it not be him, but let it be you speaking through him. We praise you for the families that will come to dedicate their children today. May this be an awesome day for them as they dedicate them in the house of the Lord to you. Father, we love you and we thank you. It's in Jesus' holy name I pray. And everybody said, amen. God bless. Amen. God is good. We're going to have three families come for dedication this morning, and I'm just going to call their names. The McCafferty family is going to come. That's Joe and Brandy, uh, Todd and Alandra Vaughn, and also David and Kristen Mize. If y'all just come on, bring the young ones on the stage with us. And oh, Awesome, awesome. Let them get in place. Yeah, just stay in there. Find your spot. We're going to step up here in just a moment. So, First off, we're going to start with the, with the Mize family. So if y'all want to step right here, this is David and Kristen and Kinsley, and they're bringing, just come on right here, right in the middle. Right in the middle. That is awesome. We're proud you are here today. And um, tell me how old Carter is now. Four months. Four months old. So it's been a joy just to see him grow here in these first few months and uh, keep up with him and see what he gets to do on Facebook, and that's awesome. They have him at church almost every Sunday. He's over that way, so I don't get to see him that much. But uh, they come today, and they want to come and to dedicate him to the Lord today. And what they're saying is they stand here before us, they come, and they want to uh, say before all of us today, they want to raise him up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord to, to bring him to church, to teach him about Jesus, and, and to help him to learn to know about uh, the Lord. So... Um, do you agree to that today? Does everybody at church agree with them to come along beside them today? Just say, we do. We do. And to support them in this day. So what we have is their certi certificate here of dedication. And for him it says baby dedication. It's certified that Carter William Mize was dedicated to the Lord on the 18th day of June 2023 at Solitude Baptist Church. Signed by his mom and dad. So you have that. And then here's his keepsake Bible for him. Okay. So you want to hold that? And I'm just going to pray for us right now. Okay. And then after that you guys can just go back down if you like. Father thank you for the Mize family as they come right now. We thank you for, for Carter. And let's pray that you bless him today bless his family today we thank you for his mom and dad who come before you today and come before all of us and say we want to raise him up in a godly home we want to have him in church we want to teach him about jesus and lord we pray for the day when he'll come to knowledge of jesus christ the cross uh, the resurrection and know you through salvation so i pray for them bless them thank you for them and for this day they dedicate him to the lord at solitude baptist church in jesus name we pray Amen. Yeah. Bless y'all. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Come right here. This is uh, Joe and, and Brandy McCaffrey. McCafferty. I'm sorry, I get that just right. And they come today. And just a few weeks back, some weeks back, Brandy was saved. She was baptized in the month of May. And after they saw a baby dedication, they said, can we dedicate our son today? So I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. So they come today, and they want to, to dedicate Jackson, all right, to the Lord today. So do you all come before us today and say you want to bring him up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, have him in church, and to teach him about Jesus? We do. And do we, church, welcome them and, and, and want to say we come along with them to do that as well? 
We do. Awesome. Here's what we have. Here is a dedication certificate for him. It just has his name, Noah Jackson Hershberger, dedicated to the Lord on the 18th day of June 2023 at Solitude Baptist Church by his mom and father. Okay? And we have that, and we have this Bible right here. Okay? Yep. To go along with that, if you want to take that and hold that. And I'm going to pray for him and for y'all and for all of us, okay? Father, thank you for Joe and Brandy as they bring Jackson today to come before you in this moment, God, of having this, a new burst of faith into their heart and their life for the salvation of, of Brandy. And Lord, for the rededication of Joe, for his heart, Lord, to want to come and to bring Jackson, to have him in church, to teach him about you, and Lord, to teach him about Jesus and help him to learn and to serve. And I just pray that you bless them. We thank you for them, for their heart to be here, and for their heart, to Lord, to bring Jackson today, to dedicate him to the Lord here at Solitude Baptist Church. So bless them, bless him. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Todd and Alandra Vaughn come today, and they have Grayson. And how old is Grayson today? Eight months, Eight months old. And as you can see, he's smiling. He's smiling big. That's awesome. So, uh, first thing they want to do this morning is they want to become members of Solitude Baptist Church. And so, I'm excited about that. They've been here for... A year and a half or two or a little longer. And so uh, today they want to become part of our church family. So if you just welcome them as members at Solitude this morning, would you just say amen? Amen. amen. So uh, uh, in a couple of weeks, we're going to have a baptism uh, for Todd. So we're excited about that. And so his mom's already been baptized. And so here, we're here to do the baby dedication this morning. So do you guys come today before all of us and, and, and Dedicate to bring grace into church, keep him involved, and help him to know about the Lord and to love the Lord and to learn about Jesus. Yes. Yes, we do. And Derek, so we welcome them and uh, say we come along beside them to strengthen and encourage them as they help raise him up in the nurture admonition of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. And it's awesome. He's got a hold on my finger like you wouldn't believe right here. That's, like, <laughs> that's cool. That is cool. Here's his certificate that just says this, baby dedication. They're certified that Grace and Travis Vaughn was dedicated to God on the 18th day of June of 2023 at Solitude Baptist Church by his mama, Alandra, and father, Todd Vaughn. There you go. That's, and here is his Bible. So if you want to hold on to that, I'm going to pray. All righty. Father, we thank you again that we can stand in this place with this young family. And Lord, we thank you for their faith. We thank you, Lord, for where you have brought them to and for the good work that you're doing within them. Thank you for Grayson and for their heart to dedicate him to you today. So I pray for him. May he just grow up and, and be able to know you and to be able to love you. I pray for his mom and dad as they walk with him through this journey of life and ask that you bless them, strengthen them, and, and encourage them on this day that they dedicate Grayson to you. Bless them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. What a great, great thing to be able to do this morning to share with you. Hey, I'm going to read in just a minute from Psalms chapter 1. And I'm going to read this week. Um, we were away for a little while. And while I was away, this thought kept coming to me all through the week. How blessed is the man. How blessed is is the man. And I knew uh, that was in Psalms, and it's actually in a very easy place to find in Psalms. It's in Psalm <laughs> chapter 1, verse 1. Psalms 1, 1. How blessed is the man. And that's what we'll talk about for a few minutes here on Father's Day. But I want to just say this. I'm, I'm a, Proud to be at church this morning. I'm proud to have my dad here with me. Uh, there's been some times in the last little while it's been a little rocky for him, but he has certainly been a rock for me. And I just want to say that to him personally today. Thank you, because I was thinking earlier about uh, growing up and him being that rock for me. And he, he was always there. He was very loyal and he was very strict. Very difficult at times. He was very loving, very expressive at times. The thought coming to my mind of two things. <laughs> Once when I had gotten a car and he was letting me venture out of my car and I was at a girl's house past curfew and my daddy's pickup truck pulls up in the driveway. <laughs> and he says, come on. That's all I had to say, come on. And she looked at me and she said, are you going to listen to him? I said, you better believe it. <laughs> he bought the car. <laughs> you don't understand me? He is the authority. I respect that authority. So I, I learned a lesson there. And when I was in college, my car broke down. And he came to Jacksonville on a cold, rainy day and worked on my car outside all day in the rain. It's freezing cold. And me just wanting to say, take it to the shop. 
you know. But he, he worked on it and got it running. And just many times through life, he's just there. So I uh, thank you, Pop, for being there. And, and uh, I, I know everybody's got a testimony uh, about their dad. And, 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 but I'm thankful today to have my dad with me. And how blessed is the man. I want you to think about that. How blessed is the man. Now, when I say that, it's interesting we think about that. Let's listen to what Psalms 1, 1 through 1, 6 says. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree firmly planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season. And its leaf does not wither, and whatever he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but they are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Father, thank you for the blessing of this day, for the opportunity to celebrate another Father's Day at Solitude. For all of the dads who were here, bless them. I pray, God, that they can leave here today and know this within their heart. How blessed is the man. How blessed am I, the man, to be able to know that I have a heavenly father and I have a savior who loves me beyond what I can imagine and who has prepared for me, not just for life, but has prepared me and equipping me for eternity. So I pray, God, that will be our heart, that will be our mind. And, and may we think for just a few moments here on this thought, how blessed is the man. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When you speak about blessing, most of the time if you talk about blessing, people will speak about blessing and they talk about physical blessings. They talk about what they have. They talk about I'm blessed to have a good home to live in. I've got a car to drive. I've got clothes to wear. I've got food to eat. We speak of many things that are blessing. We, we thank God for relationships with uh, sons and daughters, with parents, with friends. We think about relationships, and we talk about being blessed in that. And, and here in this psalm, he's talking about being blessed. And what he's going to talk to us about for just a minute is this kind of thing, a spiritual blessing. In Ephesians chapter 1, the apostle Paul said these words. He said, you have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. And he goes on to qualify those, and he talks about how we have been saved, we have been called, we have been redeemed, how we have an inheritance, all the things that God has done for us of a spiritual nature that he has brought to us so that we would be able to say how blessed I am in the Lord, how blessed I am of the spiritual things of God. So I look at this, and I just begin to look this word because I know the New Testament word for blessed. I know it a little bit, but the word there, how blessed, is a, is a Hebrew word, and it's Esher. It's the word Esher. And here's what it means. Happy, blessed in a state of your soul as well as in your physical. And so what he's talking about there is a blessed, a blessed place of your soul. So that you can know something in your soul that overrides whatever circumstances you may have. Whether those be good or those be bad. Paul said in Philippians 4, I've learned that whatever situation I'm in, whatever circumstance, I've learned. And he said, I've learned to be contented. I've learned to be blessed. I've learned to know the blessing of God because I know what it's like to have a lot. I know what it's like to have nothing in all things. He says, I've learned this place of, of gratitude, of thanksgiving because of what God has done for me. How blessed is the man. I want you to think with me about the, the for just a moment, the, the path of a blessed man. The path of a blessed man. And here's what we see. How blessed is the man, and it gives us three things that he doesn't do. Three things that he is not. It gives us three things to look at. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. Now, here's what I want to tell you. It begins to speak immediately to the character of a blessed man. It begins to let us see some things about a blessed man. In a moment, and we're going to talk about that, how he's going to prosper. But in this moment, he's going to give us a picture of some things that he says. He does not walk... 
It says he does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. He does not walk in the, those with the ungodly. He does not listen. And here's what it's going to say. A, a man who is blessed, you understand me? A man who is blessed, a man who knows of the goodness of God is not going to take counsel from wicked people. He's not going to take counsel from those who would not do and, and act and be according to where God would have us to be. And sometimes I'm going to tell you, we, we hear these things and we don't grasp that, that the world is coming at us and we listen to lots of things and we think, oh, we can get by with this or we can get by with that because this is what uh, legally we might could do or we might not could do. And here's what he's going to say. In all things, I want you to listen to this. When you go to take counsel from people, when you're going to listen to what people and people's going to speak into your life, don't listen to what people who are ungodly, who are wicked people. Do not allow them an opportunity to speak into that place in your life because here's what he's going to say. A blessed man does not walk, means to take counsel from wicked people and so there's going to be that place as i said he begins to speak to us about our character about who we are what our convictions are and he says does not stand in the path of sinners now stand in the path of sinners and what that means is you don't look at it it means to to kind of take up abode with those who would be where god wouldn't want us to be well we know that the bible says that jesus was a friend of publicans and sinners and we know he spent time with people with one purpose in mind for them to know him. He didn't hang out to them to have the good time that they were having in their world and in their way. And here's what he's going to say to me about this place of being the best man. Don't stand in the path of sinners. And what he's going to say in that is, is don't, don't take up and be too good of buddies and do things with people that lead you in a path in a different way that you shouldn't go, that you shouldn't be. Because here's what he's going to say about that. Blessed man, a man blessed of his soul does not want to hang out there. I, I thought this morning, I was thinking of Abraham, and I was thinking about Abraham's faith. And I was thinking about how Abraham and Lot travel together. And I was thinking about how Lot had lots of wealth that he had gotten basically through his uncle Abraham. And it says when Lot went into this beautiful place, he got to choose where he wanted a barren place or a really pretty place. He chose a really pretty place over next to a town called Sodom. And it's interesting word there. It said he pitched his tent toward Sodom. It means he began to hang out with the sodomites he began to hang out with people and he began to sit in the seat and, and walk in the path of people who were detrimental to his life on this earth and we see that every day you see that happen so here's what he's going to say how blessed is a man the things he didn't do he didn't stand in the way of sinners and he didn't sit in the seat of scoffers well i don't know what that meant i don't know what scoffers scoffer is one who scorns it, it, and notice there's a progression of this he walks he stands and all of a sudden he sits to sit with scoffers is to become <laughs> and embrace the attitudes of those who speak despicable, critical of someone, especially the things of God, the things of righteousness, the things of rightness. And there's some people, you know, that just always scoff, that is always scornful, and they're always against anything that's right. And you know, and here's what he's going to say: Don't don't sit with those people. A blessed man. And here's this thing: There's just choices we must make in life if we're going to walk in this place with God, and to know a place with God, and understand a place with God, to be able to know the blessings of God. So, well, verse two, what did he say? But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And his law, he meditates day and night. Oh, the delight of a blessed man. That's what the word said. It just says the delight of a blessed man. It's not those things we saw above, but he delights himself. And that means this. Where do you find your satisfaction? What is it that satisfies you a blessed man and here's what it's going to say finds his satisfaction and he's good in the law of god this means this the word of god that was their description of their time of the word of god i'm going to tell you something i believe this a blessed man a, a blessed father a, a blessed any one of us in this room for us to be able to know and walk in this place of blessingness of soul there's a place where we can know this there's going to be satisfaction there's going to be satisfaction in our heart with knowing the word of god and here's what he said about it meditate upon it to meditate upon and here's what i was thinking because we went to the beach last week and it was a long ride home on friday 
And on Friday, Karen rode home with her sister, and Zach and I was in the, the van together for, I don't know, eight hours, I guess. And he did his thing, so I had a lot of time to think. Lots of time to think, okay? And I was thinking, and this is interesting, about what I was thinking about. I had plenty of time to think. You see, I had time to do what I wanted to with my mental facilities. And I could think about some really bad things and just get all aggravated. And I could think about some really awesome things, the things of God, and meditate on the things of God and have some really awesomeness feeling in my heart and in my soul. Because here's what he says, in it, and I want you to understand this. This is a powerful thing right here for the development of, of something we talked about a few weeks ago in our series on the Holy Spirit, about development of conviction in a heart. And what I do with my mind is powerful in what I am in the development of a godly conviction. Because I believe this. There is only one thing. There is only one thing on this earth that God has given you to control. And he has given you something to control, and it's called a mind. It's a mind. It's a brain. It's a gray matter. And you have an opportunity to control that, and you're not to let somebody else control that. He wants you, through the power of the Holy Spirit, to be able to control what your mind thinks on and where you're at. And when you meditate upon the Word, it brings this cleansing to your mind. It brings this whole purity place into your heart. It brings you into a whole different place. So the delight of a blessed man is when he understands 2 Corinthians 10.5. And here's what it said. Cast down your imagination and every thought that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. And bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That, my friend, is what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Where you understand you have the ability to control this place in your mind called this, this uh, whole idea of what do we do with what we think. What do you delight in? Think about that. And I'm going to tell you, a lot of what you delight in is what you think on. What do you think on? Where is your mind in putting it in there? That is just a powerful thing to me. Your mind, sometimes when it's just free to roam, where do you allow it to roam? Where do you allow it to go? And do you understand that place of the Holy Spirit within you, bringing that place to you to be able to know what it means to hold that mind, not just hold it, but to bring it into a place of knowing Christ. Listen to verse 3. He will be like a tree firmly planted by the streams of water which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither, and in whatever he does, he prospers. Wow. Just think of the future. Just think about the future of a blessed man. Here's what it says about that. He like a tree firmly planted by the rivers of life. Now, I want you just to see that picture of a tree. I just picture a big, big oak tree sitting right down on the, the bank of a creek. And its roots, which you can't even see, run down and, and running. And they're being fed under that spring. So what you're seeing fed into that tree is not coming from anywhere else. But from under it, from its roots, its roots are going stronger. That tree's going greater. It's getting bigger. And here's what I like about it. It was planted there. It just didn't happen to be there. It was planted there. How blessed is the man who knows he's been planted. Amen. He's been planted. He's been saved by the grace of God, filled with the Spirit of God, and planted where that he's being fed by the Spirit of God coming up into his soul to be able to know something that is powerful, that is awesome. So I look at those words and I say, I'm a tree firmly planted by the streams of life. The roots and the, the water coming through those roots is a picture for us of this, of the Holy Spirit of God flowing into my life, giving me life, giving me strength, helping me to grow stronger day by day. So how blessed is a man whose life is like a tree firmly planted by the streams of waters which yields its fruit in its season. It yields its fruit in its season. I want you to think about the whole thought of that. How blessed is the man whose life is yielding fruit. Fruit. It says that right there. It says his life is yielding fruit. Well, I know we've read this verse a couple of times. But it's interesting to me 
The fruit of the Spirit of God is spiritual fruit. It's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, um, and self-control. Self-control, even as a fruit of the Spirit of God. That means that control of your mind is a fruit of the Spirit of God. So here's what I want you to see in that and to know something here that is powerful. He says, we, as blessed as we can be able to know, is living in this place of, of knowing the flowing of the Spirit of God coming within us. And here's what it says. This is interesting to me. In its season. Hmm. Man, that got me for just a minute. We're blessed in its season. And I want you to know something. I believe this. We all have a season. It's called life. We have a season called life. So now I'm in this place where... You know, I have my dad still with me, and, and I have grandkids. So I've seen my kids raised, and now I'm seeing my grandkids raised. And I'm understanding a season of life, a season that I didn't know before. But I long back for another season at times that I wish I could get back. But I want to tell you something, you don't get that season back. For young people in this room who have children, and you're raising your children, you have a season you have a season with them. You have a season with them to pack them, to prepare them to be able to know and to experience life and to know and experience God. You have an opportunity to plant something within them that they can know God. There's a story that, that I just want to share this with you and then we'll, we'll close. But I want to tell you that there's a the cool story and, it, and I like it because it comes out of Gatlinburg, Tennessee. And, and I, read it, I read it in a book. I, I wrote down the name of the book. I for, see what the name of that book was. It's called A Power for Living by Jamie Buckhannon. And, and here's what's interesting. He says in the book, he tells a story about a man named Ben Hooper. Ben Hooper walks in to the state place there on the creek in Gatlinburg. What's it called? What? The peddler. He walks into the peddler and uh, there's a man in there. And he's just going around talking to everybody. And he says, uh, this guy comes up and he said, he's thinking, please don't talk to us. We're just here. We want to be alone. We're, we're sitting at the window overlooking the creek and we don't want anybody to bother. So the guy walks up and he says, hey, I, I, I'm Ben. He said, what, what are y'all doing here? And the guy says, tells him his story. He said, well, I'm, I'm just a, uh, I'm actually a professor at a seminary. And he says, oh, you teach preachers, huh? And he says, oh, no. And, and the guy goes, Ben Hoover goes, I got a story for you. And so he begins to tell him a story. And the guy goes in his mind. He goes, please don't tell me another preacher story. I've heard all the preacher stories I want to hear. Don't tell me a preacher story. But anyway, in, in the story, Ben, he says, listen, when I was a kid growing up, he said, uh, I didn't have a daddy. And he said, my mama had me out of wedlock. And he said, I was called a lot of bad names. And he said, I would hide from people. And I didn't want to be seen. And I wanted to be away from people. And he said, but I went to church. And I was 12 years old. And I was sitting in the back of the church. And we got a new pastor. And he said, the pastor that first Sunday was at the back door. And he was greeting everybody as we were going out. And he said, I normally try to slip out before the pastor would get back there. But I didn't know his means. And so he got to the door before I got out and said, when I was getting close to the door, I saw him look at me, and I just thought, oh, no. He just knows about me. He just knows. He just knows. And said, when I got up to him, he said, hey, hey, son. He said, what's your name? Who's your folks? He said, let me see. Uh, who's your folks? And he said, I know you. He said, I know you. He said, you know me? He said, I know you. You're a child of God. He said, you carry his image. And he said, something clicked to me that day. And he said, all of a sudden, I went, wow. <laughs> there's something changed because all of a sudden I was able to realize, you know what? I'm a child of God. He had saw himself of what everybody had called him his whole life. And he said, I'm a child of God. And he said, that changed my very outlook. So the guy went on, shook hands with him and said, I just want you to know that story. Most powerful thing has ever been spoken to me and went on his way. So in a few moments, uh, the guy couldn't stand it anymore. He called the waiter over and he goes, hey man, who is that guy that come by here talking to me? He said, oh, that's Ben Hooper. I said, you don't know Ben Hooper? He goes, no, I'm not. He said, Ben Hooper was the governor of Tennessee. And he's a great and an awesome man and a very godly man. And said, uh, you know, his life was changed. Listen, because somebody spoke words into him. Get this, about the future of a blessing. 
the future of a blessing. And what he said to him was this. He said, listen, you are a child of God. I don't know how you view yourself today. I don't know what you think of yourself. I don't know where you're at. But I want to tell you something. God looks at you, and here's what he says. He says, I want to say, how blessed is the man? How blessed is the woman? How blessed is the boy? How blessed is the girl? whose names are written in the book of life. I don't have time to do the rest of this chapter, but what it compares it to is the wicked. And it says this, the wicked, the lost, those who have never accepted Christ, those are not going to stand in the day of judgment. And what he wants you to know is this, how blessed is the man? Or either how damned is the man? who does not place his faith and his trust in Christ and Christ alone for his salvation. How blessed are you today? How blessed are you? I'm going to tell you something. I believe this. God says this. Those who walk in the blessedness says this. The last part of what I read. He prospers in whatever he does. That means his life has a blessing on it. And he blesses other people god wants to use you to be a blessing to others and when you are here's what you'll say how blessed how blessed am i because i get the opportunity to bless someone else let's pray father thank